Hey everyone, this is Ben from A Few More Miles, and I'm down in South America for a new adventure. Leaving my wife Amberlynn and the pedal bike at home, my friend Celia and I will be riding motorcycles around Ecuador for the next week as we explore the Andes Mountains. I'm really excited to have a throttle, as this route will take us through small mountain villages while we travel on mostly dirt roads. To settle in, we've arrived in the capital city of Quito a day before our tour. After a walk in the park and a stroll through the botanical gardens, we're making our way to Freedom Bike Rental, where Court, the knowledgeable owner, tells us about the six-day route he's laid out for us. He's even providing us with cut sheets that have interesting things to see and do during each day of our tour. Since we've been so busy with life at home, we've had little time to prepare for this trip. It's great to simply fly in and have everything ready for us. After the pre-tour briefing, we're off to explore Quito, the second highest capital city in the world. At an altitude of over 9,000 feet, simply walking around town takes our breath away. All right, we're working our way up the teleferico to 13,000 feet. top of the lift, we instantly feel the lack of oxygen. Yet there's still more to climb as we make our way up the mountain. How you feeling? Exhausted. No oxygen here. Need to hit the oxygen bars. Much needed oxygen here at 4,000 meters. We've got and it's mango flavored too, so can't be wrong. Can't be wrong. With recovering lungs, we're back down in the old city to see the Basilica del Voto Nacional. The basilica remains technically unfinished. Local legend says that when the basilica is completed, the end of the world will come. So we're quite happy to see them doing work on the clocks. Like many churches in Latin America, the basilica is gorgeous. But this place has a truly unique experience that allows visitors to crawl through its passageways along the roof and scale the towers on precariously constructed ladders. All right. Climbing up these insanely steep stairs on the top of a roof of a church in Quito. Don't want to fall down because it's very steep. That's it. <sighs> Made it up. Thank you. 
get a lesson in salsa dancing, and then make our way to El Panasillo and to the 150-foot tall statue of the Virgin of Quito that overlooks this enormous city. Finally, a Latin twist on a familiar television show prepares us for sleep. In the morning, we head to Freedom Bike Rental to pack up the motorcycles and hit the road. to the center of the earth, the equator, and we're walking up to the monument here, just outside of Quito. We've been riding for just under 30 kilometers so far today. It's been wonderful weaving our way out of the city and excited to make it into some smaller roads. But first, a look at the equator. Double checking our GPS, it seems that the monument is about 800 feet south of the actual equator line. Not bad though, considering it was first constructed before the invention of GPS. We enjoy walking around, taking pictures, and being hustled by a restaurant salesman trying to balance an egg on a nail. We failed, but we still took him up on the offer for lunch at his restaurant. The meal was delicious. After a rest, we make our way to the nearby museum for a guided tour, a little education, and a few touristy games. We walk along the equator line with our eyes closed without being pulled to one side. As the water goes down the drain, we see it swirl in different directions depending on the side of the equator it's placed. And when it's placed on the equator line, the water goes straight down. Is this a science or magic trick? It doesn't even matter. It's still a fun experience. We're back on the bikes now and realize we spent way too much time exploring around the equator. We twist up and down the mountainside before leaving the pavement. The dirt roads take us to a gorgeous alpine lake. Lake Mohanda, 3,700 meters, and uh, it's super chilly right now. <laughs> the sun is setting, it's gorgeous, and I can't feel my fingers anymore. With the sunlight fading fast, we hop back on the bikes to make our way around the lake. Unfortunately, it's incredibly foggy, and we can't even seem to find the turnoff towards the hotel. After a few unsuccessful attempts, we decide to backtrack to Altavalo and take the paved route to our accommodations. Uh, it's pretty dark now. We're riding past sunset, going up some super yeah. difficult stuff. Uh, the riding's awesome, but this is tough. There he goes. Settling in for the night, the friendly security guard helped us start a fire in the hotel room with a jug of diesel fuel.
In the morning, we see the beauty of our surroundings. We're served a tasty breakfast on the edge of a lake and watch the local fishermen set their nets. It's a quick ride to Otavalo, where the most famous indigenous handicraft market is held. We're strolling through the stalls and checking out all their goods. With some friendly haggling, we pick up a few souvenirs for our friends and family back home. Uh, said, what's your new price? <laughs> oh, um, let's do 55. Oh, five, five. Uh, yeah, price is special 62, yeah? 62, it's a special price. Yeah. 55, we can do 55. Yeah. 55. Amigo, 60, no más, yeah. 55. No, es que si no me alcanza menos de 20 cada uno. Pero tiene tres esposas, es muy caro. Tres esposas, muy caro. Yeah, I can see you riding the moto with that. Like gold. Cool. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> then it's a short ride over to one of the few remaining traditional tanneries. This family makes leather products from scratch using the same methods as their ancestors. We are warmly welcomed into their workshop for a tour. Welcome to the Buenos dias. Buenos dias, señor. Mucho gusto. Wow. You need one of those for the kids. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> the old woman is something truly special. She's laughing and cracking jokes all the time. This stop was a real treat for us. The ride must go on. There are plenty of quiet dirt roads as we work our way deep into the mountains. This is far from the typical tourist trail. As we stop into a small rural school, the kids come running out to greet us. Their excitement shoots even higher when they find out we've brought school supplies for them. Wait, 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 it's better, it's better, it's better, it's better. We gotta share, share, share. This one, this one, this one. It's better, it's better, it's better. We play with the kids for a little while, and the head teacher shows us the school and feeds us a simple but filling lunch of potatoes and spinach. There's still so much more to see today, so we're back on the bikes into the mountains until we reach a coffee growers collective. El Presidente teaches us about growing and selling coffee. stunning countryside.
spent too much time on the road today, but we stopped to watch a beautiful sunset before riding the final few easy miles to our hotel. It's a new day, and there are plenty of adventures ahead. The riding is incredible, with gorgeous sceneries all along the route. We've been quite satisfied with our decision to take the Suzuki DR650s on this trip. They are well suited for the dirt tracks that make up the majority of the tour, and they're quite capable on the pavement stretches too. They are simple but enjoyable bikes, and we're having a great time on them. Today's ride has fewer tour stops, and that's okay with us. We're happy to be in the saddle, twisting the throttle. A little afternoon, we reach a small town and stop for a bite to eat. All the people who live nearby have congregated to the center as they prepare for a national festival. We keep asking when the parade will begin, and the answer is always, soon. After an hour of rest, we decide it's best to move along. If only we had more time in our vacation. We're seeing a lot of Ecuador this week, but one could spend a lifetime exploring this wonderful country. Hey, there's a llama on the side of the road, so we stop for a look. Moments later, a friendly farmer pops his head out of the bushes and says hello. He tells us about himself and the llama, as I struggle to use my limited Spanish skills. Nevertheless, he's more than happy to let us pose for pictures. So, yeah, llama. Sí, ah, ¿podría sacar una foto? Con claro, a... Ah, gracias. Have you ever been face to face with a llama before? Never before. Can't wait. <laughs> it's scared me. It's not long after that that we reach our homestay and relax over a delicious home cooked meal. The next day starts with a visit to the Kilatoa Crater, a two mile wide lake perched on top of an old volcano. It is stunning. Okay. Oh, you want some bananas for breakfast? Uh, they're not enough here. We need to find some more. A short ride later, we've stumbled upon a big indigenous market. Walking around the stalls, we see everything on display. Fruits, vegetables, crafts, bootleg DVDs, seamstress services, and all kinds of fatty street foods. We're climbing pretty high today, so we layer up for the cold temperatures. It doesn't take long though to reach the descending switchbacks and we're soon at the bottom of a valley. 
few minutes later, we're climbing back up the wall on the other side of the canyon. These roads are amazing. You simply can't find riding like this in the United States. Just before entering a small town, I get a flat tire. Although Freedom Bike Rental gave me a toolkit and a spare tube, we decide it's worth hobbling into town to find a mechanic. We're in luck, and he waves us right in. Without saying much at all, he props the bike up on a wood block and gets straight to work. The old tube is out in a matter of minutes, and he finds the nail that caused the puncture. He installs the spare tube, and we're quickly back on the bikes. But first, we have to pay him. ¿Cuánto cuesta? I ask. Dos dólares, he replies. Two dollars? Wow. I'm happy to pay. And we leave him with a little nip of Jack Daniels as a tip. He loved the gift. Next up, a small village that makes homemade jam. Bueno, primero bienvenidos a Facundo. Decirles que Facundo es un pueblo que los recibe a todos por igual. Small, okay, because it is small. But um, diversity is very diverse. And uh, cultural. Yes, actually for me that's very important because mm -hmm. it is a very small uh, country, but it's actually uh, so so full of culture and so full of diversity and mm. actually that's very good. Further on down the road, we reach the town of Salinas, which is a community of artisans and makers. The hostel owner helps us arrange a tour of the town with a local guide. We first visit the chocolate shop and cheese making facilities, and then to a small workshop of a man who makes homemade soccer balls. The bases principal is to form a rope. This is the hostel La Minga. I ask. What makes Ecuador so special? Y lo pequeño que es también puedes en un día puedes estar en la costa, en la sierra y en el oriente. Same day in three different places. Coast, Andes and uh, Oriente. This is most important. Mm -hmm. Dirt switchbacks and a thick fog appear as we make our way down to lower elevations. There is more amazing riding as we pass through the cloud forest and see cacao pods growing along the roadside. It's my first time seeing the chocolate fruit and I'm surprised by how big and heavy it is. It's not long before we reach the Great Palm Highway, where the road is lined with these tall tropical trees. On our way back to Quito, we're riding along tranquil tracks through rural farms. We stop to take pictures of the serene river and lush forest. We attempt to continue riding, but one of the bikes won't turn on. We try to bump start it a few times, but we have no luck. To make it more challenging, there's no cell phone service here, so we look for other solutions. Uh, so we stop for a quick break and all of a sudden, Salil's bike won't start up. We don't know why. Uh, fortunately, some farmer came by in his truck and uh, had some tools so we unfortunately stripped the bolts actually we couldn't get to the seat to get to the battery to figure out what's going on 
We are in the middle of nowhere. It's gorgeous, but the bike won't start. However, there's a little house over here and they just allowed us to, I was able to buy some rope from them. So we're gonna try and tow the bike back about eight kilometers to Pukuyaku and try and figure out what to do from there. Farmer's house in the back, my bike, the rope, How do you feel about this idea, Salil? It's too good. <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I wish us luck. The mechanic in Pukuyaku doesn't have the right equipment, and we're still out of cell phone range. So we ask a truck driver who just delivered livestock if he'll take our bike to the city of Lamana. The driver recommends a mechanic, and he gets straight to work on the bike. Of course, we attract a crowd of curious and friendly bystanders. He's quick to diagnose the problem and get it fixed. With the sun fading fast, we detour to the paved roads and push on for the final hours of riding into Quito. What an adventure this has been. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And subscribe to the channel to follow along as we document future adventures. Hope to see you next time.